Grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus, and from the Spirit that they send us. Philippians chapter 3. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, our Lord Jesus Christ. Ever since, as a boy, I learned how to play Monopoly, I have thought it would be so wonderful to have a get-out-of-jail-free card. I mean, a real one, right? Not just for Monopoly, but have this card in my wallet. And now, you've got to know, I've never been arrested. I don't think I'll ever be arrested. I don't want to be. But just in case, you know, you just never know, right? And to be able to have this card in your wallet and give it to the arresting officer and he has to let you free, wow, that would be such an honor and privilege to have a card like that. St. Paul actually had a card like that. Well, it wasn't a real card and he didn't have a wallet to keep it in. But he had a get-out-of-jail-free right because he was a Roman citizen. There are different levels of citizenship in the Roman Empire, and right at the top was being a full-fledged Roman citizen. And if you were, it meant things like you could not just be thrown into jail for anything like everybody else. Uh, the uh, police might not like you, and so they can throw you in the jail. They can beat you up. Not a Roman citizen. You had to have a fair trial. And that all pays some dividends for Paul when he and Silas are locked up in a jail in the northern Greece city of Philippi. Now before this, they had been there in the streets of Philippi. They had been preaching about Jesus, sharing God's grace with the uh, folks there. But there were some people that didn't like the fact that they were doing that. So they went to the city magistrates and they reported that Paul and Silas were causing all this hubbub in the city and apparently uh, these uh, gentlemen had enough pull with the magistrates that the magistrates said yeah we can have this in our city and so not only did they have Paul and Silas arrested but they had them beaten they whipped with with rods so it would have raised welts across their back from their head to their toes and uh, some of those marks uh, would have opened wounds, and so they were beaten and bloodied and then thrown into jail, locked up in stocks so they can't move. The next morning, things change. The next morning, uh, the magistrates determine, I guess they've learned their lesson, so we'll let them go. But when the magistrates sent their representatives to the jail... Paul and Silas said, no, we're not going to leave. We're not going to leave until the magistrates that put us here come and humbly ask for our forgiveness and then ask us to leave. And those representatives must have been wondering, so who do you think you are that you're going to get the magistrates to come here and apologize? So Paul and Silas explained, we're Roman citizens. And what you did to us, you have no right to do. It was illegal. Now maybe in some cities in the Roman Empire, that wouldn't have made a lot, a lot of difference. But in the city of Philippi, it did. Because the city of Philippi was a, a colony of Rome, which meant if you, you were a Roman citizen and you lived in Philippi, it was the same as living in Rome. And what the Romans had done there in Philippi is they made it a place for ex-military to retire. Ex-military, people who put their lives on the line for the Roman Empire. People who were rapidly in, in favor of Rome. Had all sorts of ex-military living there and the city magistrates did not want the ex-military and the political clout that they had to become aware that they had beaten and locked up, just overnight even, two Roman citizens. It would not have gone well for them. <laughs> In fact, uh, we, we just read a moment ago from Acts chapter 16 uh, that the magistrates, when they found out that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens, they were alarmed. 
Actually, that's the same Greek word that Paul uses in Acts, uh, I'm sorry, Luke uses in Acts chapter 2 to describe how the Christmas shepherds reacted to the angels that came to tell them the Savior's been born. Remember King James? How afraid were they? They were sore afraid, right? They were scared. They were terrified. Same Greek word here. The magistrates were sore afraid when they found out they had done this to two Roman citizens. And so, of course, they came to the jail. They said, we're really sorry about beating you up and locking you up. Would you mind leaving our jail? And please, would you leave Philippi and don't ever come back? Now, sometime later, Paul is in jail again, but this time he's in jail in Rome. And while he's cooling his heels there, he is writing letters, and one of those letters goes back to the Philippians. And when he gets to chapter 3, he says to them, Our citizenship is in heaven. Now, don't you think that those Philippians, when they hear Paul writing about citizenship are going to flash back to Paul and Silas in that jail cell in their city. And how Paul's Roman citizenship, Silas's Roman citizenship, didn't just get them out of jail, but got them an apology from city officials. But now Paul is saying, as wonderful as it is to be a citizen of Rome, it's even better much, much better to be a citizen of heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to spend the rest of my message talking about three ways that, that citizenship is in he- uh, in, our citizenship is in heaven. is such a privilege, such a, a gift, a blessing. And here's the first thing. Because our citizenship is in heaven, and we can eagerly await a Savior from there, it assures us that we've got this close, loving, intimate relationship with the God of the universe. The God who's created this vast universe, we can't even measure how big it is. The God who keeps it going, who's keeping our heart pumping that next beat, allowing us to breathe in. Moment by moment, every day, he's the one that keeps us alive and everything else around us. We have this close, loving, intimate relationship with that powerful, wise, and loving God. Oh, he's also the God who demands perfection, isn't he? Because he's the God of perfection. And you and I don't give him that. And still, we have this close, loving, intimate relationship with him because of that Savior who's going to return, and we can look forward to that. Here's what St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, uh, Colossians. God has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. We used to be part of a different kingdom, Satan's kingdom. God's rescued us from that. He's brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, And in spite of the fact that that he has loved his son from eternity, he still sent him to be our Savior. And through that son, we have redemption. He's bought us back. He paid the price for all of our sins, every last one, no matter how horrible and jail-worthy and embarrassing those sins are. Jesus paid the price so that you and I don't have to. And because he's done that, we also have the forgiveness of sins, every last sin washed away as though we didn't think about it, didn't do it, because Jesus was held accountable in our place, forgiven, redeemed, part of God's kingdom because of that. Or what about this verse in Ephesians? In Christ Jesus, you who were once far away, far away from God, not at all like God, shouldn't have had anything to do with us, You who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. That Jesus would die on the cross in our place. So, consequently, 
you are no longer foreigners and aliens. It isn't as though we're in God's country and, and we just kind of snuck in across the border. That we're waiting for the INS to come and arrest us and, and deport us. That, that's not who we are. We're not foreigners and aliens. Here's what we are. We're fellow citizens with God's people. That's the uh, NIV's translation, fellow citizens with God's people. Uh, closer to the Greek, it says we are fellow citizens with God's holy ones, with his saints. Fellow citizens with saints, people who are pure and perfect, people who are, who are already in heaven, some of them. We're fellow citizens with them because of Jesus' blood shed for us. Oh, more. And members of God's household. See, we're not just citizens of heaven. We're part of the royal family. Part of God's household. Princes and princesses. That's what Jesus has done for us. That's the kind of relationship we've got with the God of the universe. Now, don't you think that because God has done this for us, washed us clean of all of our sins in Jesus' blood, redeemed us, forgiven our sins, made us part of his royal family, fellow citizens with the saints. Don't you think that he's going to keep all of his promises to us? No matter what those promises are, and no matter how it seems to us, God, there's no way you're going to be able to keep your promises now. With the, the health issues I'm facing, with the upset in my family, with the way my job is going. How, how are you going to keep your promises? And, and yet, it's just got to be that the all-powerful, all-wise, and all-loving God, who has given us this close, intimate, loving relationship with Him, he, he can't go back on those promises. It would be impossible for Him to do that. When He tells us He's going to be our good shepherd, and even though we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, he's going to lead us in the green pastures and by quiet waters. That surely his love is going to follow us all the days of our lives and we're going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's just got to be the way it is. It can't be any other way, even if we can't see it. God has paid too high a price for us not to follow through on the rest of his promises. Here's the first thing about being a citizen of heaven. Here's the second thing I'd like you to think about. Heaven's our home now. It really is. We're going to sing that during communion. Heaven is our home. Life is a desert drear. Heaven is our home. Life can beat us up, can it? You know, these days especially, we're, we're wondering maybe on a global scale what's going to happen in the war in Ukraine, what's going to happen with the United States and and China not being on very good terms these days. What's going to happen with inflation? It just continues, it seems, to rise. and Prices are going up. and Especially those of us who are on a fixed income, we're wondering how we're going to pay for all of this. How are we going to survive? Life has a way of beating us up because you and I are sinful people and we live in a world filled with sinful people. It's, it's a broken place. And yet, because our citizenship is in heaven, it reminds us that this isn't all there is. Everybody else in the world that's not a Christian, this is all there is. But you and I know this isn't all there is. This is such a small, insignificant part of the eternity that is ours. It's not even worth wringing our hands over. Because heaven is our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. And we're looking forward to Jesus coming back to take us to be with him, body and soul, forever. And that keeps us going in the dark days. About two weeks ago, a friend and a classmate of mine, another Wells pastor, uh, got to go home to heaven. And how wonderful it is for Doug that he's now in heaven, but you know what? It's also wonderful for his family to know that that's where he is. That, that brings them the comfort and, and even the joy, not just for Doug, but for them. We're going to be with Dad someday. 
We look forward to going home to heaven. It, it pulls us through life, keeps us going. As the executive director for 316 Now, that Wells organization that is uh, hoping to, uh, working to raise up confessional Lutheran leaders in China, uh, I have had the opportunity to do a, a good amount of travel to China and to other places, and Sharon and I, my wife and I, have been um, privileged enough to travel other places in the world as well. I enjoy traveling, especially for 316 now, sharing God's word with people half a planet away. What a privilege. But I do have to tell you that after being away from home for a number of weeks, and one time it was almost two months, I'm looking forward to going home. And that keeps me going. In spite of the fact that this, what a wonderful privilege to be half a world away and telling people about Jesus. You know, after a few weeks, I'm thinking, boy, I'd like to sleep in my own bed again rather than one of these rock-hard Chinese beds. I, I, I'd like to eat food that I'm used to. It'd be nice to go to uh, Culver's and have a butter burger and fries. It'd be nice to be back with my wife and my kids and my grandkids and friends and other family and my church family. And so that keeps me going at those times. Yeah, it, it, two more weeks, I'm going to be home. This is, I, I'm, I'm not going to be a foreigner in a foreign place forever. One more week, I'm going to be home. Three more days, tomorrow, I'm going to get on a plane, and I'm going home. And so for you and me too, citizens of heaven, we're going home. This world isn't all there is. It keeps us going. Here's the third thing. Because you and I are citizens of heaven, our values are so much different than everything else in the world. We're not like everybody else. Jesus has made us so much different. Citizens of heaven. And so we live as citizens of heaven. We don't get sucked up into a life that doesn't know anything about God's grace and forgiveness and the heaven that awaits God's values now are our values. His mindset, our mindset. What he tells us he wants our lives to be like, that's exactly what we want our lives to be like. And it, it, it troubles us when, when they're not. And how refreshed we are to know that even those sins are washed away in Jesus. And so we're different people. We love even people that aren't lovable. We're there for one another. And as citizens of heaven, we want other people to be there with us. Heaven's never going to be so full that we're wishing there weren't so many people around. And so we share what Jesus has done for us, how he's made us citizens of heaven, and how Jesus offers that citizenship to everyone else. Our citizenship is in heaven, and we can eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, in Jesus, we do have a get-out-of-jail-free card. Actually, it's better than that. It's a get-out-of-hell-free card and get-into-heaven-free card. Citizens of heaven, brothers and sisters, let's live like we're citizens of heaven, and we're eagerly awaiting the Savior from there. Amen.